when i didn't find my dream coming true about being an a-list hollywood actor at thirty five at around nine p.m. on the eve of my thirty fifth birthday my inner being said okay let's put this acting thing down or at least that's what i heard no that was not your inner being okay that was your mother <laughs> you're not even joking are you <laughs> how did she do that <laughs> well by okay. that we mean that sort of the way physical humans approach things this is how it goes so you have this desire but you have beliefs that mute the desire you have a desire but you have beliefs because your beliefs are based upon what is happening where your desire is based upon what you want and what's in your vortex and so your beliefs are the things that mute your desires and so most humans don't have really pure desires you've got desires that are muted because a belief is just a thought you continue to think and a desire is a thought that you think too so if you're giving some air time so to speak to your desires that's wonderful but if you're giving equal or more air time to a belief that is in contradiction to the desire then the mix of your vibrations is the way your life plays out and there are people who have been with us for quite a long time that still have that experience of realizing as things play out from time to time that they've got more hindering beliefs than they realize that they had because a lot of people are not really owning up to how they really feel about things they've learned to say words that sound positive and then they fool themselves by believing that what they're saying is what they're offering vibrationally until life plays out and shows them something different the age factor is not a factor except that humans think it is but a human who doesn't think that the age is a factor it would not be easy to be a human that doesn't factor in what almost every other human factors in but you could do it so we want to say if any desire is strong enough and by that we mean dominant enough by that we mean not contradicted by beliefs that are constantly pounding away at it then any desire can come about it just does not matter all things are possible you can be or do or have anything that you want so our reference to your mother is not only because it was some of what she thought and therefore a lot of what you learned most people learn limitation from their parents and from those who are around them because most people learn their vibration from what they're observing and most people are not even coming close to living their dreams that's why the handful of those that have that kind of success is a handful of those who have that kind of success you see here's the thing about desires and we might as well be the ones to break the news to you your desires never stop being your desires you can resist them by not letting them flow you can get weary of trying for something that you can't move on but we want you to know that the only reason anybody's not moving in the direction of their desire is because that's not the direction they're looking most people are so busy telling the story of what was or even the story of what is that they hold themselves in a vibrational frequency that doesn't let them have the satisfaction of moving in the direction of their desire satisfaction doesn't come only when you move in the direction of your desire and get all the way there satisfaction comes in the moment that you begin moving in the direction of your desire when you stop swimming upstream is when satisfaction begins to come when you start swimming with the flow and this is what we want to make so clear with every word that Esther can find to match the vibration that we're offering is that because you've already put it into your vortex and your vortex is spinning with the power of the universe and law of attraction has already gathered the cooperative components and everyone who is non-physical and adoring you and rooting for you is calling you toward what you're asking for that's a really powerful stream that really is is the path of least resistance and when you let go of doubts and fears wait when you let go of the thoughts that bring the doubts and the fears then you have the satisfaction of moving in the direction of it and so you're not going to get any encouragement from us to give up on something you want Just quickly, please tell Esther that is the most amazing blouse. That's, it, it contains several shades of my favorite color, which is cobalt blue, and it's just breathtaking. She chose from five things that she brought this morning. 
and she put it on because it's not her favorite so apparently your mother picked it <laughs> It's a little too tight in the arms for <laughs> Esther's comfort. Okay, so I've worked really hard to try to understand all of what I've heard you say so many times. And it's a yes, problem. We're working pretty hard. I've always had. Yeah. yeah, we're wanting you to get over that because you have to work hard when there's resistance in the mix when there's no resistance in the mix it's ease and flow right and and I, you know you you stopped yourself and you rephrased and I, and I want to try to get back to what that was you said because it was about the emotion is the indicator of the vibration we don't want you to say it's doubt and fear that's holding you back the right. feeling of doubt and the feeling of fear is the indicator of the thoughts that are holding you back right so the key in that moment, I mean, self-soothing is something that's come up in discussion here. And I also I have a specific type of therapy that I go to for the condition that I've learned that I have, which the physical world has told me is blah, blah, blah. It is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's the perfect title for it. What have you got? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> How important is it? Blah, blah, blah. Is it real? Blah, blah, blah. Does it matter? Blah, blah, blah without working i would like to find more alignment with my inner being more often and be in play well, it'll be easier being... for you now because now you are looking in the direction of your mother and that's where she is there it is again <laughs> <laughs> oh they like that they like soothing when you say there it is again you've done that twice now the, the, the audience's response we know, yeah we know what they were saying okay. we want to know what you think they were feeling when they said it what is it you're responding to um do you think they're sympathizing alignment so it's their alignment well, no it's it's alignment not theirs it's alignment like it was a moment where the whole room felt the same identification all right so this is really good because a human can see that either way and you saw it the way that we want you to see it it's what we talked about yesterday It's the difference between compassion which is the way source sees things in other words seeing it and feeling whole with it and not feeling any sympathy or empathy about some plight but instead being forward-looking toward the well-being that you're seeking and so we're glad that you felt that that way because that's the way they meant it that's not always the case some Sometimes you'll catch the audience there was a case yesterday where the audience was caught off guard and they responded like humans <laughs> sometimes when someone wants to come up and we will choose the one that we're choosing with very specific intent and someone next to them or behind them or in front of them starts up and we say wait 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 and we send them back to the chair and the audience goes oh <laughs> Because they're feeling so badly for the person who isn't chosen. That's the human thing we were that talking about. That was the kitten that came out of the box yeah. when they were. Yeah. Yeah. So, all is well here? <laughs>